Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 43 of Forever Stranded, a mod pack by Gaming with Sheridan. So in the last episode, we actually start we started actually edition and crafted the atomic reconstructor right here because I had an idea about Dirt Farm 2.0. And I set up one and I made the line bigger. And I explained to you guys all of the potential flaws with this and where I was stack at, stuck at. And I got some suggestions from you guys. So I'm just going to stop it quickly to 1. Get rid of the noise and 2. Get rid of the lag. The first problem being the lag. The second problem being this overflowing and not necessarily crafting the right thing. And the fact that it was imperfect with the detection. Well, you guys came true for me and I got some suggestion from all of you uh, on how to resolve all of this. And I finally ended up on a major derp and burned down my whole nature. I was so sad about that. So I went at it like I do with everything and I went with a vengeance. And I created all of those trees to make this whole nature place a lot more, a lot more nicer. Wow, that's, that's almost a term. Uh, although I did forget to complete the conduit and that's... Why did I forget to complete the conduit? It's because I oh, it's because I didn't have the quite clear glass, and I started making some. But I'm I started doing some research into the uh, moving worlds quest line, and I've hit somewhat of a snag. Quite clear glass right here, and the snag is kind of important. It's that things take a long time in that mod. I kind of already knew that based on how long it took for. Uh, the silicon creation, like how long the silicon takes to create. But more importantly in this case, uh, we also have to create fuel, and not only do we also have to create fuel, we also have to create some uh, uh, some machines that requires a lot of titanium. And the only way to get titanium, I'm just going to make sure before I make that comment final, the only way to get this titanium is from rutile ore that we can get no see I shift click right left whatever click I try to do you don't get it from any of the void ore miner so the only other way to get it is from sieving nether gravel and nether gravel as you guys have known I've set up a little line down here but I never made it super complete and now I have to live with the fact that I have to refill it all the time. So I need to hop first my lava game and to my nether, uh, netherrack creation to fill this up. So this is a couple of things that needs to happen. For the time being, I'd like to start with some tips and tricks. The first tip, well, I say the first. I have four tips and tricks, and they're all from uh, So Wish. Uh, back then I made an episode that I called the Psoish episode because I wanted to give her a big shout out for all the help she's been giving me. But I should have reserved the name for this one because in this one, boy oh boy did I get a lot of feedback from her and a lot of tip. And this uh, stone pressure plate, very simple, you put it right here and you remove the button. And when you want to craft something, you put... Uh, I have to turn off. <laughs> okay, so it's going to help if I turn off my electromagnet. But if I turn off my electromagnet and throw an item here, it's on the plate. So it's weighing the plate down and it's going to not transform anything. Is this not heavy enough? What? What's the other pressure plate that's lower? Maybe a wood pressure plate wood pressure plate so let's make one like so and hopefully this one will work because I'm pretty sure this should work unless it's just that I don't have enough item and you have to put multiple item at a time for this to work ah exactly so see that was me derping and making a plate that was too uh, that required too much weight so you put a wood pressure plate in there and boom anytime you want to craft something without wasting power you just drop something in there the second thing is Although my solution worked, it's pretty dumb. There's something called quantum storage unit, and it holds up to 2 billion items. So instead of having seven of these in a line with multiple emerald upgrade, 
I can just do this and change this to insert. I'm going to change this one to extract. Oh, to extract. Active without signal. And I'm just going to let this go up and I have a beautiful count. So I'm probably going to make more of those cobblestone generator depending on how fast this fills. But if I look at this, I have already 913 stack, which is pretty close to 60 something thousand. So I'm not sure that this is going to be a problem that the dirt quest. And the dirt quest is really becoming a problem because this, these two pulverizers, I can't keep them full for two reasons. My tree farm's not big enough and I made them, well, I, I want to say I made them too fast. I upgraded them, but I upgraded them in the hope that they would go faster. So here's what I'm going to do for that. My two problems that I had were about the fact that my crafter was filling up and gunking up. So I'm going to make this third tip from SoWish. I'm going to craft an analog crafter. Now, there is still an issue with this, is that they are slow. But if I put it down right here, and I'm going to get some gravel, oh, I'm going to get some gravel, like so, and some, do I still have dirt in here? Yeah, and some dirt. What you do is you set this as a sticky, so it's never going to use everything that's in there, and you use it to spread item to make sure that it, all of the dirt doesn't go in the first one, and then you say disabled, 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 disabled. And you just put these in like so. And now you're sure you're good because these will never empty fully. They will never go lower than one in each. And they are the only four that can accept item. The one only problem, as I mentioned, is that this is four seconds per item. Whereas the other one was almost instantaneous. So instead of having one crafter, I'm going to need multiple. But they're so cheap, crafting multiple of these are not going to be a problem. Um, so that's why in my time lapse, I'm going to try this route. I'm going to try to change my setup upstairs to have some drawers and a drawer controller so that I can put things directly in the drawer and pull whatever I need from the drawer. The other block that so wish, and this is tip four, told me about is the scanner. I also have a problem with the scanner. And my problem with the scanner is that I have to rethink my dirt 2.0 setup. So if I take a coarse dirt from here and I take an obsidian hoe from here, I'm going to show you what I mean. I can put the scanner right here and the coarse dirt here, and then I can hit it once to say it's dirt, and I can even make sure and say hit it twice to say farmland. And then here I can say set to current block, and current block farmland, and it asks for the moisture level. I'm going to leave it to zero because it doesn't matter. matter. So this is kind of perfect because it would send a redstone signal, and let me just do that right now. Redstone, I'm going to put some redstone right here on the ground, like so. And if I break this, there's no more redstone. If I put a coarse dirt, still no redstone. If I make this dirt, no more redstone. If I make this farmland, then I get a signal. So this is kind of perfect. It solves all the problem that I exposed to you guys, and it's making me like kind of giddy, like so nice to have the sharing from all of you people and be able to fix those problems. My only last problem is I don't know where to put it because I have something on this side, on this side, and on top here. So I thought, hey, what the heck? I'm going to put it on top. Oh, it's still downstairs. So let's go downstairs back to where I left it. So I decided to try that. I decided to put a block of coarse dirt down and break this. Uh, really have to go to tone that thing down and put it down on top of it. So now the detection is not on the right side. Let me just quickly grab a wrench and set the detection down, down on the downside. And now I'm going to have to redetect the block. And I'm going to use the hoe, but I can't change it. And the reason you can't change it is that you can't hoe a block 
that has a block on top of it. So I can not hoe this one, but I can hoe this one. So the only configuration that can work for this is one where I make a star <laughs> is one where I make a star pattern. And what I mean by a star pattern is I mean I'm going to go further down there so that it doesn't catch it again. So one machine here, one machine here, one machine here, one machine here. Or I can still have the one machine under and have this one right here. So on one side while well, facing the other way, facing this hole where the dirt would be. But that means that in my current setup, I'm going to have to space down everything by at least one, which is not ideal. I was hoping to be able to get a very compact line. So I have to think about is the value of always being exact on breaking the, the dirt faster and more important than the space that it's taking. So I'm going to try and play with that a little bit in my other playthrough to find a configuration that I like. In the meantime, I'm going to continue working from the uh, flawed but working mechanism where it might break one too many because it's going to take me almost no time to put this upstairs. So that's it for the tips and tricks. Now about this quest, the launch quest. We need a launch pad, a fueling station, and an unmanned vehicle assembler. And an unmanned vehicle assembler, unmanned vehicle assembler, is crafted with this titanium luminide rod that we have tons and tons of stack of, and dilithium dust, and a rocket assembling machine. And a rocket assembling machine is made from titanium gear and titanium rod. And the titanium I don't have enough. I don't even have enough. Uh, let me just recheck quickly, but I'm pretty sure that I don't have enough. I need basically... Oh, no, this one right here. I need basically two titanium gear and two rod. I already have two rod, but the gear needs one, two, three, so six, and two sets of four, and the four crafted with three, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need ten titanium ingot, and I'm not that far off but I don't have it and we need more nether gravel to be uh, sieved to be able to get that. So I need to get started on that as soon as possible. The other machines that I'm also going to need are the electrolyte, um, let me pull up my uh, uh, my holo projector and show you the machine because I am tempted to craft them on a time lapse although I'm not 100% sure yet. First of all, we're going to need a precision assembly machine, which is built like this. It's, it's not a small machine, and it has three levels. A lot of them are machine structure, but it still needs from the back. You see two engine and two coils, and that's the funny thing. If you see the coil, they never change. I tried building this machine with faster coil, but no, it needs two copper coil. You can put any level of motor you want, but you have to put copper coil and you need some power input and all of the other good thing. The second machine that we're going to, and sorry, that machine we need to be able to make uh, the, not wafer, I'm just going to look right now what they're called, these, the advanced circuit because not in the rocket assembly machine but in this one we need two advanced circuit. Uh, is that the one that I want to make? No, sorry. So it's in, not even in those, sorry. It's in the, the other machine that we want to make. Because we're going to need to make the elec electrolyzer right here. And this one needs basic circuit. And basic circuits are made from basic circuit plate cut with the cutting machine. But the basic circuit plate are made in a precision assembler. So the electrolyzer is gated behind that. So we're going to have to craft this first. And after the electrolyzer, the other thing that we're going to need is the chemical reactor. So the electrolyzer breaks down water into oxygen and hydrogen. And the chemical reactor that I'm going to put right here, like so, you have a fluid output here and a fluid output, an output hatch here. And then we have two fluid input. So in this machine, you put the hydrogen, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, and that crafts the food, fu fuel. So these are all the machines that we're going to need to do. 
Even though the quest only wants a fueling station, a launch pad, and an unmanned vehicle assembler, we can't do that one because we're missing just a little bit of titanium, but we also need to make all the other machines to even be able to take off. And, oh, this loot is kind of interesting. I didn't know it was going to give us all that. Anyway, so this is kind of stuck until we craft all of that. And I didn't do it in this episode because I wanted this episode to explain where I was at with the dirt quest and fix and the, a couple of my derps and tell you about all of the neat trick that I received. Although we do have a quest we probably can complete. So I want to get that thing out of the way. And let's grab the prismarine shard and what's this? Yeah. And let's put this in here to finish sieving. And with these prismarine shard, we're going to get our last prismarine large plate. And this is it. And now we're going to go back in here and we're going to craft the um, toolkit that we need for the last, well, not the last quest, for the second to last quest. So toolkit, diamond toolkit, and no, I don't have a diamond block, so let's craft the diamond block first. Perfect. Diamond toolkit, like so. And this is a quest. Basic survival, uh, not basic survival, tank a pow. Extreme modifier. And from this we can get a magma slime crystal, a diamond apple, a half heart, and the loot chest. And, oh, we get all of these. That's nice. And from here we get to make a choice. Again, all of these are pretty easy to make. I don't care about the expender and the blue slime crystal. I'm just going to take <laughs> one more bending moss. And it's just like I'm accruing them. So next quest is ender modifier. Well, this will be the last modifier you will need. And the Ender modifier, uh, let me look up Toolkit again, is the one that we've been using the most because it's the easiest one to craft. So I need five Obsidian, obsidian Large Plate. Let's go back here. Oh, and my jetpack is depleted. So let's go back here and grab a stack of Obsidian. I'll just throw my uh, jetpack in this recharge right here. And I'll go back here and I'll create as many plates as I can with this. Like this. And then I can finally craft my Ender Toolkit. And that's another quest done. And even more, that's a second quest line done. So I can grab all of this. And let me just go back into it quickly. Basic Survival, all done. And let me, this is still not fixed. Think about all done. Technological Revolution, all done. And Creating Life, all done. So I only have the Collector Quest now and the Moving World. So in the remainder of this episode, there's two more things I want to do. Uh, well, first, let's open the loot chest. Wow, dead bush. This is amazing. Compressed Diamond Armor and Compressed Spider Eye. Don't care too much. I have too much stuff in my inventory. Let me just come in here and dump some of the things. Um, don't care for most of those things. They're not that important. Soul Forge, maybe that's interesting, but I'll have to look into it. Um, and let's go with the next loot chest. Oppressor. Well, if that could be good if I wanted to make food, but I don't care about the food anymore. And some more dead bush. So that's it for the loot quest. Nothing so impressive this time. To be honest, I was really hoping for an infinite water source. Because there's one thing that I forget, I forgot to do. The, um, what's it called? The uh, reactor that I want to set is going to need a lot of water to turn it into steam. So I'm going to need another infinite water source. And you saw how painful that was to craft. So I'm going to do this also in the time lapse, crafting another infinite water source. And I'm also going to craft everything to make a second big reactor. And I'm going to quickly remove this here because I want to build the turbine with you so that I can show you the setup of the turbine. It's, I'm not going to show you the, um, what's it called, the big reactor because I don't have everything crafted. But we did craft everything, so we're just going to take the time quickly and craft the big reactor. And oh, I forgot the 10 temp info, so let me turn that on right now. So let me break all of this because I'm never going to use this again. Next time I need to kill Wither, it's going to be the wood farm. And the wood farm is probably going to be in two or three episodes. 
and it's going to be a big craft. The reason I've been waiting is that I need more ender pearl. And my ender pearl farm, although it's great, it's not amazing, and the woot, it's going to require a lot of ender pearl. So I'm going to re uh, I'm going to solve this this episode. So by the end of this once I'm done placing the turbine down, the next thing that we're going to do is get a little bit further in actually addition because we're going to craft a uh, spawner changer, which you guys are going to see is really amazing. And the spawner changer is the one thing that's going to let us get some Enderman spawner for more Ender Pearl. Uh, we're probably also going to get a witch spawner. I never thought I would get a witch spawner, but supposedly that witches are a good re uh, good way of getting some uh, some redstone. That's a comment from uh, Jimmy Ashby and Considius Gaming. And Considius Gaming, if I remember correctly, said he got a ton of redstone and wasn't even using dust uh, to get that. So that's very interesting to me. Okay, I put all of this away to make space on my hotbar because now I'm going to grab everything that I need to craft my turbine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make put the turbine in the corner here and I'm going to put it uh, three away. And I'm going to make it go in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So four internal. One, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What the heck happened? This is such a weird block placement. Must be because of the torch, but this is really weird. And I'm going to quickly graft. Uh, craft grab my wand because when I'm building things that take a little bit of time I like doing it this way perfect so this is going to be the front of the reactor and the only reason it's going to be the front of the reactor is that uh, I want to put the back there when where I can meet the uh, the reactor that we're going to craft so in the front we need the turbine controller like so and we need this turbine rotor bearing. This is important because our rotor needs to connect to this. And we're going to complete the surrounding with glass, like so. Then on this side, that's where I want to be able to extract power. I'm going to put one here and one here, leaving me space to put a third one here if I want later. And the reason I'm making two ex uh, exit is that I can have two line of power going down this way. So now again, I'm just going to continue building it out. Like, um, did I go one too far? So one, let me put the rotor down because the rotor is going to be a great guideline uh, to let me know if I'm doing well. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five up to here. So yeah, uh, this shouldn't be there because this is the end of the reactor. And I'm going to do the housing around quickly. Oh, I can't click, that's too far. So it's going to come like this. Right here, same on the other side. Like this. And then I'm going to put the turbine glass here on the top. Oh, not on the top here. The whole frame has to be made of casing. So all of this has to go away, and the whole frame is now made of casing. So one important thing, this rotor right here must also be connected to casing. You can have whatever you want around here, but one has to be a rotor bearing, and this has to be a casing. And I'm now going to put the rotor blade. And the way the rotor blade works is kind of funny. If you put a rotor blade here and here, you see it doesn't even connect. But when you put the one up uh, on the up upside, then the multi-block structure gets created. So I'm just going to fill this as I go back like this, and then I'm going to do the other side. And everything else is empty because this thing has to turn. And you're going to see it, well, you're not going to see it turn in this episode, but you're going to see it turn. Then these platinum block I put around like this, and that's what's going to create power for us. It's the fact that uh, the friction from the rotor on these that create power. 
it's kind of logical, but it, it should be more copper and coils and it should be m much more complex. And then we're going to put these three, six uh, input right here. And all I'm missing is the glass. And when I put the last glass, this is going to form as a multi-block structure. Et voila. So these are the uh, steam input. And I'm putting them there because I'm going to put the big reactor right here with the exit of the steam on this side. So it's going to be short to connect all of them together. And let's go on the other side and show you. This is the turbine control. So do you see engage coil? If you disengage the coil, this will turn faster and go to a higher RPM but produce no power. When you engage the coil, it starts producing power. Then you have the exhaust if you're creating too much steam or too much water. And then you have activate the turbine. I'm putting it on, but it's not getting any steam. So you can see the little steam icon, but it's not doing anything. And then we can deactivate it. I just need to go cool down quickly. This must have turned off. No, it's not turned off. I just, I'm just too far from it. Oh, and the nice thing is when I get some power down there, I'm going to be able to put a temperature regulator on the other side so that I don't, won't have to uh, run from one to the other all the time. So I just, I'm just going to eat this quickly. And this is the best ratio that I found. Four turbine to one uh, reactor like this. And that's... I did some testing and some research and that was really the best setup. But technically, if I end up replacing these platinum casing, these platinum block with some endurium block, I think I can go up to 7.2 kilo RF, which is really cool. Although you could say, just make this one reactor bigger and it's going to give you more kilo RF. It's fun trying, we needed to build the uh, steam turbine and you know I like doing things and using everything that's built in the pack. So that's it for the build of the steam turbine, although in the time lapse I'm probably going to make the big reactor and if I have time assemble it and make it ready to connect it and show you how it works. The last thing is the spawner changer. So let's look at the spawner changer um, item. So the spawner changer, it's crafted from spawner shards and magma cream and this. And that's why I didn't attack this sooner because I didn't want to start actually addition too soon. We need an empowered diamethine crystal block, which is made, unfortunately, with the empowerer. And the empowerer is a multi-item machine that's a bit, well, not complicated. It's just a bit long to build and it drinks power like crazy. So let's get started on that. The first thing we need, actually, a dish, oh, it doesn't work here, is that we need some, let me search because I never remember the name, actually, addition. We need an empowerer, and an empowerer is made from a display stand. But we're also going to need four display stands to put around the empowerer. And the display stand are made from ethic quartz and ethic green block. Both of those are made from quartz. So we're going to need five sets of display stands. So we're going to need five times six, 30 block of quartz. And the block of quartz on the atomic reconstructor give you aesthetic quartz. And if you chisel them into another type, let me find it again. If you chisel it into, well, if they're just chiseled, then they give you aesthetic quartz. So let's get, let's see if we have enough quartz and, ugh, I'm afraid we're not going to have enough quartz. 30, come on, lucky 30, nope. So what if I look in here, still no. <sighs> so I might be blocked with that. I got a couple of stack here, so I'm not that blocked, fortunately. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to fill this one with a stack and I'm going to fill that one with a stack. Oh, I'm missing a mesh and I'm out of mesh. Great. So now I'm on a mesh quest ingot. Let me grab some iron ingot like so. And let me make one and 
two and I'll do this around and then I'll craft as many mesh as I can and I'll go fill that place with meshes so one in here and I'll remove the one from my hand my secondary hand and I'll put the rest here and I hope yeah these had not stopped working great okay so how many more block of quartz oh you have 28 I'm not missing that many uh, six, seven, I'm just going to wait for the last one and then I should be good. Well, am I good actually? I just need to check. So I need to do two sets like this. So yeah, those 15 I'm going to chisel right now. So I need 15 chiseled quartz block and I need 15 normal. So I'm just going to go drop all of these on my new plate, like this, and just give it another go. Yeah, these are still blocks of quartz. Hello. No. Oh. So these are still blocks of quartz, but if I put them there, they should become ethetic quartz. So I should be able to make my bookcases now. Oh, well, no. Not necessarily because, uh, no, not my bookcase, my um, display case. Display case. Display stand, sorry. I need some advanced coil, so I'm going to need five basic coil, and I'm out of this, so now I need to transform some redstone. Let's do, let's do two stack just to be, be sure. I'm not that low on redstone. I'm not ideal super high, but I'm not low enough that I need to worry about transforming too mu too many. And here's enough. Let's put that in here in my ME system, and I'll just do this around. And I need one, two, three, four, five. Um, do I have gold nuggets? And I have 30. That should not be enough. So let me craft some more. And I'm going to put I'm going to use R on this to say what can I do with this. No, not this one. The advanced, perfect. I'm going to throw this in. One, two, three, four, five. And now I can make the display book, uh, the display stand. Display stand right here. And that's five of them. And from the display stand, now I need some iron casing. So let's put that in there too. I'm also going to put one display stand in there. I'm going to get rid of the turbine now, seeing the turbine glass, because I don't need it anymore right now. I need a double battery, which is made from, oh, an advanced coil. Oh, I still have one. That's that's great. Perfect. And I can, oh, I'm going to need two of those. And what are the little star-shaped things that I need? I need 10 Inori crystal, and Inori crystals are made from, okay, super easy. I, oh, Ryan. Iron, perfect. Let me grab two blocks of iron that I'm going to go put again on the uh, plate, but this time I'm just going to quickly shove them in there. Perfect. So that's done. This machine is really neat. I probably shouldn't have put it this far, but I can continue now. Perfect. So with this in here, let's go again with the this. Oh, wow, the cap locks time with the display stand and right click and the double battery let's get a single battery and now the double battery is like oh so for the double battery I also need another one of those double battery incoming perfect and now I should be able to craft this so I have my in power I have my four display stand and now I can chain look at my spawner changer it needs an empowered diamond teen, which needs two clay and a block of clay and a light blue dye. So, light blue dye right here. Two of those. Now let me get some clay. So I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, because I can craft two, and two blocks like this. And now I'm going to need some energy cable. E, that's not a lot of energy cable. So, energy, energy. 
Wow, energy. Okay. These, and let's craft a couple more of these. Oh, no, I'm going to need more of that because of the distance. And let's go back right here. And I'm going to put it in a weird position. And the reason I'm going to put it in a weird position is that I just figured that I didn't need this. these. So I'm going to put the empowerer right here in the middle. And then you need the display stand at least three away. So one, two, three here. One, two, three here. And now I'm going to need one, two, three, and a display stand here. Oh, and a display stand here. And one, two, three. And this is not the ideal spot, but it works and it was fast enough instead of having to find, like, bring cable all the way there. So let's look into one clay, one clay, one big clay, and one light cyan dye. And in right here, what's the thing that we have to put in the middle again? That's what I forgot. Diamantine. Uh, diamantine? Yeah, di diamantine. Empowered diam diamantine, which is made from a diamantine block, which is a block of diamond. Whoa, blocks of diamonds, great. I still have enough of those. Yeah, I still have enough of those, so I'm going to be good. So I'm going to craft two of those. One and two, and I'm going to go drop them in front of my atomic reconstructor. It's a really cool mod, to be fair. If it wasn't for the amount of power this thing use, because now I'm going to put this in here, and look at the buffer on these. They have an 800,000 RF buffer, and I don't know how much it's going to use. Maybe it just has a big buffer and doesn't use a lot, but I have a feeling like it's been using a lot of my power in my other playthrough. Maybe it's because I didn't have the big reactor when I started doing this and I only had my <laughs> little uh, Sterling generator, which were not generating a lot. And yeah, so this is not so bad. I just had a wrong impression. And considering everything that actually addition can do, I am really, really liking this mod. It really has a lot of great stuff. And let me just search at it again, actually addition. So item interface D's energy laser relay to be able to transfer energy all the place the greenhouse glass makes things grow much faster but it's just that they're kind of expensive at this well in the beginning of the game but the storage crate like they just have a lot of great stuff now that I have this let's hope that I have enough shards so let's start from this and no hmm I thought for sure we had some shards, and we probably have upstairs. Let me look into one of these crates. Oh, three. Come on. Three, and none here, and... Oh, 24. Perfect. <laughs> I'm good. No problem. I just had put them all in the same place. And we're going to need magma cream like this. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put this in here, I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to craft two spawner changer. These spawner changer, I'm telling you right now, they're one use only. So I'm going to go outside and look, it's night, or is it night? Uh, time minus four, it is night, so I should find some enderman. And what you want to do is you just want to whack an enderman with it. There's so little mobs. This is kind of crazy. Where are all the mob tonight? And like the other episode where I needed Endermen, when you need them, they're nowhere to be found. Give me Enderman. Come here, little Enderman. Oh, and here's one. Oh, really? You have to be next. Oh, there, he's going to come to me. And that's one Enderman. And I still have, oh, right there. No, it's not that I get him, it's that he teleports. <sighs> Come on. Great. Is it working? I don't even know if it's working. 
I don't know if I'm even able to click on the guy. So I'm going to guess that I am hitting on them. And what's the best way of checking that? The best way of checking that is actually having a spawner. And we both know where I have... <gasps> oh my god, no, 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 no. Oh, this is bad. I can't believe... Oh, this could have been so bad. I can't believe my stupid jetpack ran out of power just as I was in the middle of the mobs. Whew, that thing, it uses so much power, it's crazy. Okay, so that was scary for me. Maybe not for you, but it was scary for me. And this is already at 60k. So this is crazy. It's going to be very easy to complete the cobblestone quest. But then I say that, and I'm going to open the cobblestone quest, and I'm going to see that it's 50 trillion cobblestone. So let's hope that's not what it is. And diamond jetpack. Uh, almost well not fully recharged but enough that I'm going to go sleep I'm just too excited I need to know if it works so I'll go up here and I'll sleep and I want to end the episode on at least having my enderman spawner so hopefully I'm going to get it in a jiffy so I'm just going to take this drop of evil put it right next to this and we're going to go to the meteor because we still have the spawner that we never moved and I never got them because I wanted to use the drop of evil on them so once I'm here I might as well do this one creeper spawner and this is a skeleton and we have a skeleton already we don't have a zombie so one zombie spawner and let's try this spawner changer right click and an enderman spawner let's just grab this and Okay, so this one I never clicked properly on the, on the Enderman, so I can't get this one. But it doesn't really matter because I have an Enderman spawner now. So it's very easy for me to come back and get some uh, a second Enderman spawner. Whoa! Can you hear the sound? I'm somewhere where there cannot be a storm, but because I went somewhere there was a storm, I'm getting the storm. So I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to put my first Enderman spawner down. And I've learned not to break these uh, glass. So I'm not going to break these glass. And I'm going to put my Enderman spawner right here. Oh, which one is it? Is it this one? No, that's the zombie one. Great. Let's pick that back up. And it's that one. And yes, that's the Enderman spawner. The only thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to turn it off for now. And the reason I'm going to turn it off for now is that these Endermen will teleport. But that's what I needed to do, and it's done now. So all I have left to do regarding the Endermen is craft uh, something that stops them from teleporting. And before I end the episode, I'm just going to look it up and show it to you. It's one of the Obelisk. Obelisk. So I need to make this uh, relocator weather inhibitor. This inhibitor prevents teleporting within its area of effect. So I need to craft one of these, which is going to be very easy. All I need is an Enderman first and a Vibrant Crystal. And a Vibrant Crystal is crafted like this. Can I even make the Vibrant Crystal? Vibrant Crystal. Uh, yeah, I can if I want to. So let's put that right in here. Vibrant Crystal like this and then I need what's the other thing that I needed I needed in Endermend so uh, is this even a good idea might not be a good idea and I might regret it but let's try it so I'm gonna turn this on and I'm just going to wait to see if an Enderman spawns and this might just be too well lit so let me unlit this whole place and break this and wait for my enderman although my enderman is going to go downstairs so let me go on the other side of the room 
right here and wait for my Enderman. Is this clogged already? Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's majorly clogged, so you know what I'm going to be doing in my uh, time lapse. And I don't know why the Endermans are not spawning. I should have been gutting. I, I should have gotten some by now, unless maybe they spawn really with a lower rate of spawning. So guys, uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now because the episode now is way longer than it was supposed to be, and. The next episode, which is going to come really shortly after this one, is going to be a time-lapse episode because I need to fix a lot of things and prepare a lot of things. But when I come back, I should have a nether gravel line fully completed. I should have the uh, Enderman spawner with the aversion, uh, not the aversion, with the uh, uh, obelisk that stops them from teleporting. And I should have a better setup for my dirt farm. And on the, the episode after that, I'm going to show you how everything was done. And we're going to get into crafting fuel. Oh, and here's an Enderman. So let's see if I can catch him quickly. And I have him. So this is what happened. Because uh, the Enderman is not bound to this place, there's one that finally spawned. And when he got hit by a spike, he teleported away the moment he got hurt. Uh, where's the crystal? It's right here. So now if you... Oh, that's not good. If you put a crystal right... Oh. So in case you didn't see, there's an Enderman in my base. Now I'm just afraid that he's going to grab something. So... Come here. Perfect. And there's another one in the boat there. So the spawner is working. <laughs> Let me go turn it off ASAP so that I don't get too many Endermen until I'm ready to deal with them. Perfect. And there's another one down there. And this is ready. Uh, let's come right here. Uh, not right here. In this. And with the Ender Crystal, we can craft the... Huh? The... <sighs> I crafted the wrong thing. Obelisk. Inhibitor obelisk, ender crystal, no, okay, phew, I thought I had crafted the wrong thing. So, obelisk, I need this first, perfect, and then I can craft this. So this obelisk, which I'm going to put right here for the moment, it's really not the best place, I really don't care, all I want to do is connect it quickly, because it needs power. And I'm going way over on this episode, like always. So now it's powered, and the range is 32. Show range, and it's... Yeah, the whole mob farm is in the range. So now I'm going to remove the... Sh I'm going to hide the range. And, oh, I say that, but I should go downstairs to see if it goes down far enough. And I'm not seeing any white, so yes, we're within the place that we... We're within the range. So let me remove this and let's go downstairs. Well, not downstairs. Let's turn back on the Enderman spawner. And hopefully this time we don't have to wait half an hour to get an Enderman. Oh, not like this. Always on. And I'm going to fix that hole soon. And I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to be a bit more patient this time. Oh! <laughs> Um, I already have ender pearls, and just by the look of it, it's like four. And here's some endermen coming that just spawn, and they're gonna get on the spike, but they cannot teleport, so now they just die. Oh, but they can walk away fast enough, but in the end, they'll always end up coming back here and dying. So I'm going to have to take care of this overflow problem, and I'm just gonna give up the enchantment, this enchantment idea. I'm gonna put away. Uh, one or two of each in a crate and once I have one of two of each in a crate I'm going to make sure that everything go else goes in there and that my um, pickup problems are fixed because I want these ender pearl and that's all I need about it so guys this is really the end of this episode thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode bye now <laughs>